folks, welcome back, everybody, uh, to California. I'm Tom. The color cast is on the air now live and direct from CBS uh, Television here in Los Angeles for Tuesday night, the 28th of April, 1998. Our old friend Paul Rodriguez is here tonight, and uh, Meredith Vieira, who now appears on a program called The View with our pal uh, Barbara Walters. It's on ABC in the mornings. You'll check the listings for the time in your town. You know, I was saying to uh, Mr. Kennedy and the crew here, we were in New York for the last six nights on this program. And I came back to California last week. It's almost like we were never there. You know, it's al almost like it never happened. But, you know, you go and you do this, and the work is so intense for a week. And you come back, it's like you were never, ever there. But I thank all of you who sent email in today uh, about our shows in New York. One man was especially... Uh, uh, poetic in, in, in saying that he'd lived in New York for a long time and then left the city 17 years ago. And our shows helped bring back all the happy memories that he had forgotten about New York City. And then another viewer said, you know, you, you, your shows from New York City really stunk. You're a tough crowd to please, I want to tell you. Uh, one said, you know, we love the shows from New York City because you didn't have all those stupid phone calls. And three others said, you know, we really miss the phone calls in New York. You are a tough crowd to please. Uh, one of the things that happened in New York that you didn't get to see was uh, I, I was uh, invited to go to CBS at Black Rock there on 6th Avenue and 52nd Street to do what is called a satellite interview tour. Uh, and this can only be likened to the Baton Death March. You, uh, you go into a studio. <laughs> they had water on the march, as I recall, yeah. And you go into the studio and you talk to 20 or 25 uh, people from TV stations around the country and they ask you questions. And, uh, for example, one fellow came on, I forget where he was from, and he said, Now, Tom, this is your first trip to New York, isn't it? I thought, i got to get out of this room. You know, I lived here for 11 years. And then I was talking to a guy, and a lot of people asked us, they said, You know, how long do you plan to be doing this show before you would want to leave? And this question came up, and I was trying to give this man an answer. And I sneezed on the air. And you've heard me say, I hate sneezing on the air. But since I have this videotape, I watched it earlier, and it really makes me look stupid, and therefore it deserves to be shown. Here I am talking to somebody on the satellite tour. But I said to him, when do you plan to leave that show? He said, you know, it's kind of like being at dinner at a restaurant. <laughs> Ed edit that out, will you? I hate it when I sneeze on television. I was wondering if he actually said that in the interview. <laughs> hey, Phil, let me make you feel at home. <laughs> man, talk about an ill wind, right? Jeez, oh man, it's almost worth another look, but later, and we could slow mo it, you know. <laughs> man, this stuff comes flying out of your mouth. It's terrible. So anyway, there was a there was a story in the paper uh, in New York yesterday, the New York Post, about my future here at CBS, and you might have read this in the papers today. But after having a series of conversations with, and I don't give me the big hush here, you know, with David Letterman, who I work for, and Rob Burnett, and Peter LaSalle, and my friends at CBS, I've come to a decision that I would like to leave this program. And it seems to me, as I said to them, and as I said to the people at the New York Post, there are some logical points in time. Uh, one would be at the end of this year, the program goes down for a two-week vacation over the holidays, which would be a logical time to bring somebody else in and do this. And if they can't get somebody or don't get whatever they want to do in this time period ready, then I would stay like through spring of uh, 1999 at the latest. And believe me, I, you know, this is not, I, I'm not mad at anybody here, but I'm going to be 62 years old next month, which is not old, but I have more to look back on than I have to look forward to. And I just don't want to spend all of my years coming into a television studio five nights a week. I will miss this to be sure, but I feel it's time to move on. And incidentally, I don't want you calling on the toll-free now every night saying, you know, Tom, we're going to miss you. Let's not make this the farewell tour of the student prince, you know. In fact, during the first commercial, we could have ten seconds of whining, and then it'll be all over with, okay? <laughs> but I have my plans all set for the last show. It's going to be a humdinger. you will be on all night long. Unbelievable. And just so that I don't think that I'm too special because I ain't, I received the following postcard today at my house. This came when I was back in New York last week. And I'll put it on the air. This I'm not kidding you. Dear Tom, listen, I realize your schedule is up in the air and everything, but could you and Bob Hope and Frank Sinatra please do me a big favor and try to drop dead sometime within the space of this year so I can collect a trifecta from Mr. Blackwell? I'd sure as heck appreciate it. Thanks a bunch and God bless. Jesus. <laughs> I'm surprised it wasn't written in crayon, huh? Anyway, Paul Rodriguez is here tonight, and uh, Meredith Vieira is here as well, and you on the toll-free. Now, you know the rules now. 
In the first commercial, we have 10 seconds of whining, and then that's the end of it. Whine, whine, whine. I'm Tom. You're watching CBS, and thanks for catching our pictures as we fly them through the air. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Tom, and the color cast is on the air now from the immense broadcast facility that is known as CBS Television City in Los Angeles. It is Thursday night, the Ides of October, 1998. Thomas Gibson is here tonight from the hit TV show Dharma and Greg, and astronaut Buzz Aldrin, who was on the first moon mission, the first manned mission to land on the moon back in 1969, and of course, you on the toll-free. A couple of emails and then on with the big show. Uh, dear Tom, a few weeks ago on your show, you made mention of Steve Bell. At the time, you said you did not know of his current whereabouts. Steve Bell used to anchor the news on uh, Good Morning America. Then he went to Philadelphia to Channel 3. I'm happy to say my viewer writes that the student and faculty of Ball State University in Muncie, Indiana, which, by the way, is David Letterman's alma mater, are now reaping the benefits of having Steve Bell teach in the telecommunications department. He was brought to the university as an endowed chair. Uh, the university found money to keep him on the staff, and his experience and personal touch have added very much to the already fine department. Thank you very much for that information. Vicki and Roger in Carmel, Indiana. Steve Bell is alive and well. And the uh, second letter, dear Tom, quite a while ago, I heard you mention, uh, mention Vermont, and I gathered from the conversation you had some connection there. I missed that information and wondered if you would let me know if you've ever lived there or if your family members are from there. Thank you very much. Sincerely, Kathy in Chesapeake, Virginia. My father was, in fact, from Rutland, Vermont. His father, my grandfather, ran the H.J. Snyder Printing Company in Rutland, Vermont, which was a highly profitable company. And if he hadn't drank it away, I'd be there setting type today. <laughs> and we'd all be better off. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, here are, uh, these are headlines that have appeared in papers from coast to coast. Actual headlines used to describe actual news stories. But because of the way they are worded, in some cases, they have come out unusual. Not necessarily funny, but unusual. And these were sent in by Thomas, and I thank him for these. Uh, headline number one, deaf mute gets new hearing in killing. See, unusual, right? Two, two convicts evade uh, posse, uh, jury hung. See, unusual headline. Milk drinkers are turning to powder. See, a little change in dietary habit. Iraqi head seeks arms. Queen Mary having bottom scraped. Uh, in the science report, you know, planets, uh, is there a ring of debris around Uranus? This is a <laughs> scientific report. <laughs> science Times headline, ring around. I'll wait for the laughter to subside. <laughs> Panda mating fails, vet takes over. Child's stool, great for use. <laughs> In garden, small stool. <laughs> Close to the... <laughs> We're toast. <laughs> I'm Tom. You're watching CBS. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> everybody. I'm Tom. The color cast is on the air now from CBS TV here in Los Angeles, California for October the 16th, 1998. 
Our old friend David Milch, the co-creator of NYPD Blue, is here tonight. And the always popular and entertaining Dr. Ruth Westheimer, who has a brand new book out, which is not about sex, but is about being a grandparent. And she will be with us as well tonight, along with David Milch. Uh, a little email to answer and then on with tonight's festivities. And I want to get back to those headlines tonight, you know, because there are some really cute ones coming up. This is uh, from Gord McDougall. Dear Tom, you are the kind of all late night broadcaster uh, that I like to have in the chair. And you made it seem so magical back in the Tomorrow Show days. I'm your con in your conversation with Thomas Gibson on Thursday night, you once again referred to David Hartman's 1974-1975 series, Lucas Tanner, as Lucas Tanner, M.D. Lucas Tanner was not a doctor, but a school teacher. A few years before Lucas Tanner, Robert Hartman played Dr. Paul Hunter on The New Doctors from 1969 to 1973. And once again, you have totally confused the audience. Thank you for allowing me to clear that up. I feel better now. Thank you very kindly. Till the day I die, it's going to be Lucas Tanner, M.D. <laughs> It's like the guy that came home at, uh, at 6 o'clock in the morning and his wife says, where you been all night? He says, well, he said, I got home around 2 in the morning and I figured I didn't want to wake up you and the kids, so I slept in the hammock out back. She says, we don't have a hammock out back. He says, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. See, Lucas Tanner, MD. Uh, this is from Sandra, the Baltimore Police Department, famous for their superior canine unit, was somewhat taken aback by a recent incident. Returning home from work, a lady had been shocked to find her house ransacked and emptied by burglars. She telephoned the cops at once, reported the crime. The dispatcher broadcast the call, and a canine officer patrolling nearby was first on the scene. The police officer approached the house with his dog on the leash. The woman ran out to the porch, sees the policeman with the dog, throws her hands in the air, and says, I come home from work to find my house broken into. I call the police for help. What do they do? They send a blind policeman. <laughs> Now, when we left the headlines last night, we got to the one, you know, uh, where a child's stool is handy in the garden. What I meant there, and that, it was a headline in a garden column in the newspaper somewhere in these United States. You know, a little tiny stool that a child would use, you could sit on as you pruned your tomato vines. I'll wait for quiet. <laughs> Believe me, it won't be that long a wait. Uh, Soviet Virgin lands short of gold again. Soviet newspaper. Organ festival ends in smashing climax. Enraged cow. These are headlines that appeared in papers around the world. The Soviet Union as well. <laughs> Enraged cow injures farmer with axe. Two sisters reunite after 18 years at the checkout counter. <laughs> Another health and science headline, never withhold herpes from a loved one. <laughs> uh, in labor news, if strike isn't settled quickly, it may last for a while. In world news, war dims hope for peace. Yeah, that, that. <laughs> Experts say something went wrong in jet crash. Yeah, that'd be true as well. And the final headline, blind woman gets new kidney from dad she hasn't seen in years. <laughs> I have a hell of a story, but I'm going to save it till the night we get back. Really? Yeah. Uh, if pressed, I could... I could. No, let's no, no, no. We have David Milch waiting, who has much to talk about, and Dr. Ruth Westheimer, who always has tips for us, and you on the toll-free, playing Uriah Heep again tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Tom. You're watching CBS, and thank you for catching our pictures as we fire them through the air. We have shot our wad. <laughs> Happy Halloween. <laughs> I'm Tom. You're watching the color cast now from CBS Television here in Los Angeles, California for Friday night, the 30th of October, 1998. Our old friend Howie Mandel is here tonight and Chastity Bono, who has a brand new book out about her and uh, her life. And by the way, if you're keeping score, this is Late Late Show number 801. Last night we finished the first 800 in our series here and we're... Um, 
rewarded uh, by CBS with a festive shrimp and champagne buffet. All day yesterday, the CBS shrimp peelers were at work, and <laughs> <laughs> the shell-free crustaceans were enjoyed last night by a happy and grateful staff. Uh, last night here, we, uh, we chatted with James Woods, and I thank all of you, by the way, who, who, who emailed today about that and about the appearance of uh, dear Virginia Graham, who was truly enjoyable here last night. And I had an email about her appearance with, that I want to share with you. Uh, dear Tom, I enjoyed your show last night with James Woods and Virginia Graham. Miss Graham's story about the view of Joan Crawford resembling the Holland Tunnel reminded me of another Tallulah Bankhead story you might enjoy. While making the motion picture Lifeboat, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, the cameraman was having trouble getting one of the shots. Uh, there was a scene involved uh, pulling the survivors of a torpedoed ship into a lifeboat, and since Miss Bankhead would not wear any underwear, the cameraman kept getting a certain part of her anatomy on film when they tried to pull her into the boat. When he asked Mr. Hitchcock what he should do about it, Hitchcock replied he would have it taken care of. He would decide which department would handle it, the wardrobe department, the makeup department, or the hairdressers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. E.L. Probst of Casper, Wyoming, for sharing that Tallulah Bankhead story with us. <laughs> you know what I thought we'd do tonight? I, I, I got a little email the other day uh, and, and, of interesting yet useless facts. And there's some intriguing information here, not necessarily humorous, but now see if you don't think this is intriguing and if this doesn't pique your curiosity about the human experience. All right? If you were to yell for eight years, seven months, and nine days, you would have produced enough sound energy to heat one cup of coffee. Now, isn't that interesting, huh? The human heart creates enough pressure when it pumps out to the body to squirt blood a distance of 30 feet. Now, think about the power again of the human heart. Banging your head against a wall uses 150 calories an hour. <laughs> See? Interesting, right? What would you think the strongest muscle is in the entire human body? Now, think about that for a second. It's the tongue. Huh? Who knew? Right. <laughs> Several of you. <laughs> yeah. uh, here's another one. It's impossible to sneeze with your eyes open. Think about that. Every time you sneeze, your eyes close. You cannot kill yourself, and this is important for parents to know when they have small children. You cannot kill yourself by holding your breath. You cannot hold your breath to death. So if your child were to hold his or her breath, don't be afraid if he or she turns blue, they, they can't die. Americans, on the average, eat 18 acres of pizza every single day. Think about that. And you're more likely to be killed by a champagne cork than by a poisonous spider. Think about that. And in the, in the insect world, <laughs> a cockroach will live nine days without its head before it finally starves to death. And in the larger species, some lions make over, mate over 50 times a day. Think about that. Here's, here's the final fact. <laughs> I've worked that whole thing to get to here, all right? <laughs> if you were to pass gas consistently for six years <laughs> and nine months, you would produce enough to create an atomic bomb. Th think about that. <laughs> I think I have. <laughs> Kennedy says he thinks he has. <laughs> Howie Mandel follows that, and then Chastity Bono and you on the toll-free. I hope you've had a very happy Halloween. I'm Tom. You're watching CBS, and thanks for catching our stuff as we fly it through the air. <laughs> I remember when I lived in New York, uh, there were so many trick-or-treaters on Halloween night that rather than go to the door each time the doorbell rang, uh, we would just put a huge bowl of candy out on the front porch. We had a little stoop there on 51st Street with a little card that said Honor System. And sure enough, there was still candy left sometimes on the morning after Halloween, but it saved a lot of trips back and forth. So if you live on a busy street, you might want to take that as a little Halloween tip uh, tomorrow night. On, uh, on Monday night, Susan Sullivan is here, and of course, the grand old man of football, Art Donovan, will join us as well. And I hope that you'll come back for that program on, uh, on Monday night. That'll be the old 15-second cue. Correct. Well, that's just about all I have left, because it's time to go home. Huh? As, uh, and think about this now. As the Dalai Lama said to the hot dog vendor, make me one with everything. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening.
morning, my friends. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Tom, and the color cast is on the air now for Friday, the 13th of November, 1998. Jerry Springer is here tonight from the program that bears his name. And Martha Williamson, who is one of the producers, in fact, the executive producer of Touched by an Angel, uh, here on CBS, and you on the toll-free. Funny thing about Friday the 13th, people have this great fear of the number 13, triskaidekaphobia, huh? If you go to the airport, there usually is no gate 13. Most buildings, there is no 13th floor. Um, most fl uh, No airplane flights are flight number 13 or, or 1313. The only place in all the world where the number 13 plays well is in showbiz. All of our contracts are for 13 weeks, and that scares us. That's why, why they do it. You know, I, I remarked last night about Martin Mull being here on Tuesday and Wednesday and the job he did while I was down with a brief... Uh, uh, I didn't have the flu. I had just a virus of some kind. This email came in today. Mr. Snyder, it's good to have you back. I'll keep this brief and share with you the first thought that ran through my brain when I saw Martin Mull's face instead of yours. I thought, oh, my God, Tom is dead. <laughs> Imagine my delight when I found out you were merely sick with the flu. Please, Tom... Don't scare us like that again. Best Mark in New Albany, Indiana. Mark, rumors of my death are greatly over-exaggerated. I, I was going to save this for the last show, but I'm going to run it tonight, okay? There, there's a commercial out for a company which is called Smart Beep. It's a beeping service. And uh, I'm going to show this to you, and it's been pulled from a lot of broadcast stations and may well be running in your area. But it contains a very funny scene. I call your attention to the woman sitting in the car seat. Here is a commercial that was pulled from the Fox Family Channel, and now you'll find out why. You folks at home, watch the monitors. I can't believe it. It's my first blind date. Oh, I do it all the time. Really? <laughs> Woo! Woo! You guys meet? Greg, Janice? We sure did. That was stupid. <laughs> Great. This is Smart, a beeper service for just a buck ninety-nine a month. From who else? Smart Beep. Call one eight hundred Beep one ninety-nine for other smart stuff like directions. We've got chemistry here. You feel it? I felt it. All right, Janice. <laughs> <laughs> now I can understand why. On the Fox Family Channel, they might pull that, but good God for late night television or adult television, you know, after the kids have gone to bed. And by the way, kids do that too, you know, they laugh. My granddaughter does it all the time and thinks it's hysterical. But I tell you, we saw this the other afternoon. I said, please get clearance and let me show that to the folks who have not seen it. <laughs> I may call and order the beeper service. You know, there was a time in, uh, in Florida, a long, long time ago, there was a cable system and they were supposed to run a program. Uh, with the, uh, the, the evangelist who's been here from, uh, from Oral Roberts, uh, from, uh, from Oral Roberts University. And the title of his program, it was a Sunday afternoon religious program called Something Wonderful is Going to Happen to You. And instead they ran Deep Throat. You know, some guy <laughs> put Deep Throat into the video cassette player, and this thing ran on 125,000 uh, cable homes. There was not one call of complaint when something <laughs> wonderful is going to happen to you <laughs> came on. <laughs> I may crank that up here one night, you know what I mean? Anyway, here in slow motion is the, uh, is the crucial scene of the commercial. <laughs> I tell you, where can you get Jerry Springer, Martha Williamson, and the farting lady all on one shot? <laughs> I'm Tom, you're watching CBS, and thanks for catching the odor as we fly it through the air. <laughs>
Good evening, my friends, and welcome back, everybody. I'm Tom. The color cast is on the air now for Monday night, the last day of November 1998 that there will ever be in the history of the world, the 30th. Leslie Moonvest, the president of CBS, is here tonight, and you've enjoyed this in the past where you can kind of call in. We'll make believe that Les Moonvest is the station manager of CBS, and you can call and ask the manager about your favorite shows. You can call and ask him why he canceled Bonnie Hunt, which is always, you know, good for conversation. <laughs> Or congratulate this man on the great uh, November sweeps period that we've had here at CBS. We are the most watched network in all of America. Uh, Jacqueline Smith is here tonight, one of the original Charlie's Angels, who's in a brand new motion picture on this network tomorrow night. I thank all of you who emailed us during Thanksgiving week. We were on holiday last week, and for the first time in many, many years, I spent a week here in Los Angeles. I didn't go up north, didn't go back east. I just stayed here and did things around the house. For example... Have you tried replacing, you know, the outdoor garden lights? I think they call them Malibu lights, mm -hmm. you know, low-voltage lights. I, I was doing that the other day, right before Thanksgiving, to light up the yard, you know, for the holiday. And I got out the replacement bulbs, and there were three words on the, uh, on the label that caught my attention. The words were, easy to install. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be a contortionist. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, the guy, the guy who made the lamp bulb and the guy who wrote the instruction sheet never met each other. It was unbelievable. And then I, I've been waiting for a year to clean out my closet. I know that you've all done this. And, and by the time I got through, I assembled four boxes of clothes that I have never, ever worn, or maybe worn once or twice. They'll all go to the parish church on Saturday when they pick them up. But I also discovered about five very expensive Christmas presents from CBS and CNBC, which I've not opened for the last eight years. <laughs> And I would tell you what they are, but if my friends and relatives are watching, they're going to be getting them for Christmas. <laughs> I'm recycling, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And then Thanksgiving was a great day because uh, the companion and I took mom uh, to the club for uh, Thanksgiving dinner. And she was so cute, my mom. All the way from, from her house to the, to the, to the club, uh, sh she was talking about whether she would have a martini or a dry CC Manhattan on the rocks. This was a 20-minute decision that mother had to make. <laughs> She voted for the dry CC Manhattan on the rocks, which she enjoyed immensely. But now here's the wind-up, the dear, the dear, dear, dear woman. Got a, a, a bowl of uh, cream of celery soup, and she's eating it with the spoon upside down. <laughs> I hate to laugh, but I said, Mom, you know, you gotta, you got to turn the spoon the other way, or it's, it's not going to work for you. <laughs> And then on the way home, Mom was in the back seat, and all of a sudden, you know, the radio wasn't playing, and all of a sudden I hear this little voice going, I wish I were in the land of cotton, old times there are not. <laughs> I looked at my companion, I said, how can you not love it? You know, I mean, she just had a great, great day. Leslie Moonves is here tonight, who runs CBS, Jacqueline Smith, with a brand new movie on the same network. And uh, Joseph C. Ruggiero, better known here as Joey the Rug, and tales of his experiences on NYPD Blue and the magic of you on the toll-free line for questions for Leslie and Jacqueline and Joe, uh, and also for me about things that happen backstage here at Worldwide Pants in which you may have an interest. I'm Tom. You're watching CBS, and thanks for catching our pictures as we fly them through the air. <laughs> I like the way Les Moonvet said, and Tom, thank you for four great years here at CBS. We really like the work that you did, and we hope down the road that you could do something else for us here. Did not, or was I only dreaming? <laughs> what are they going to do? Take the show off the air? Huh? <clears throat> Excuse me. Cherse la flemme. Tomorrow night, Robert Wagner is here and the author, Neil Gabler, and I hope you'll join us same time, same station. As the student said to the professor, how come I got an F? He says, we're not allowed to give you a G. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>
evening, my friends. Welcome back, everybody. I am Mr. Holiday. I'm Tom. The color cast is on the air now for Tuesday night, December the 8th, 1998. Michelle Lee, the actress, is here tonight, and Nina Burley is here with a remarkable story of JFK and a woman during the 1960s that wound up in a sensational murder case. So stay tuned, and we'll be joined by you on the toll-free line. Uh, you've probably read this, but it's been um, unseasonably cold in California. The other night in Pasadena, it was 33 degrees, which is unusually cold. And, of course, when they settled California, somebody made the key decision, leave out the insulation and don't have foundations and basements. And so when it's cold here, it is really cold. Conversely, it was 75 in New York the other day, and I recall when I lived there, the problem with 75 in New York in December is that they turn the, uh, they turn the heating and cooling systems around in mid-October, and they go from air conditioning to heat, and in back in those days, I don't know how it is now, but back then, once they put on the heat, they couldn't shut it off until uh, April or May. So if you were in a New York hotel in December and it was 75 degrees outside, it was 102 in your room. <laughs> So that isn't always a, a good thing. But it's getting warmer out here, and it looks good for the, uh, for the holiday season uh, coming up. Speaking of that, you know, in years past, I always, you know, my dad was in the Christmas tree light business, and he was a great believer in outdoor uh, Christmas holiday decorations. And so every year I would go out with, uh, you know, nine or ten strings of white lights because I've got a little crummy fence that surrounds the front of my dump. And I, I, I would, you know, go out there with the uh, staple gun and, you know, put the, put the lights up and plug them in here, there, and everywhere and blow the fuses and the circuit breakers and cut my hands and swear and curse on the birthday of the Christ child. <laughs> and so two weeks ago, I'm walking around town with Oliver, and, and I noticed two kids putting lights up at a guy's house. And I said, by the way, I said, do you need a little extra business? And the kids said, yeah. So they came today, two young men, and the dump looks great. I mean, it's, it, I mean, the, you know, they, 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 they do it in such a way that the wind doesn't blow the light off the trees, you know, and it doesn't blow out the circuit breakers, and it, it, it's, it's great. And the great thing is, when the holiday season is over, they come and they put this all in a box, and you put it in your garage, and they come back next year. And the price was, uh, you know, extremely reasonable, considering what, you know, my time is worth. I even used to get up on the ladder and clean out my own rain gutters, you know, and then break every fingernail and once again take the name of the, of the child in vain. But I, I, you know, as I get older, I have people that do these things for me. And very soon now, I'll have a man come in here and do this for me. <laughs> you know, I went to see uh, Mom today. She was 90 years old today. And those of you who have older parents, and by the way, all of you who email me about my mom, and there are hundreds of you, I, I cannot tell you how you touch me and how much I appreciate uh, your kindness to my family. But they set up a special table for her down at Mary Crest today, and I went down, they had happy birthday napkins, and they all sang her the song. And she had her lunch, and now we went outside on the patio for her 90th birthday smoke. And a man comes in, he says, Mr. Snyder, how are you? I'm one of your mother's doctors. I said, Doctor, how are you? He said, fine. And she said, oh, Doctor, how are you? And she, uh, he said, Marie, how are you? She said, I'm fine. She says, I'm 90 years old, and I'm smoking a cigarette. And he said, good for you. Huh? And everybody's saying happy birthday, and she had a terrific day. And tonight she's got some brand new flannel jammies, and that makes all of us in my family happy. And thank you for thinking about her. Uh, last night here, I mentioned uh, somebody who uh, tried to get uh, baby picture Christmas cards from Sears, but she, they, they could only have happy holidays because Sears did not want to offend anybody by putting Merry Christmas on a card. And I gave the wrong name. I said it was Angela. It was Angelo, Annette, and Cara Monica Fusaro of Staten Island, New York, and I'm happy to make that correction. Any other things I need to correct from last night? I don't no, think so. no, certainly not the Dennis France interview. What a guy he is. Huh? Michelle Lee is here tonight, who is doing a picture on one of the cable channels tomorrow night about the late Jacqueline Suzanne. Remember her first book, The Valley of the Dolls? And then Nina Burley and uh, the story of JFK and a paramour back in the 1960s that wound up in a, in a terrible case of murder. And you on the toll-free. I'm Tom. You're watching CBS, and thanks for catching our pictures as we fly them through the air. Tomorrow night here, Jewel, the singer, will be with us, and Georgia Durante will join us as well, and uh, you on the toll-free line as we continue steamrolling towards 
the holiday season. <laughs> By the way, it is not sex if your partner starts to deflate. Good night, everybody. <laughs>